The morning star drive on 17.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly, so let's realign. Just listen and fill your mind. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Friday, April 7th. And this is the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. We're on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe, follow us on SoundCloud, and make sure to support us on Patreon. So what is happening on this wonderful and awesome Friday? Yes, the weekend is here. We've got current news from around the world, the word study on the Wednesday message, and of course, until the end podcast uh, with Daniel Baker. All right, everyone, how are you doing today? Yes, it is Friday. Thank God it's Friday. It's the weekend. Yes, we have a time to break from the work and the school and all the other difficult things that are going on in our life. Friday is here, and I'm sure all of you are getting ready to enjoy another weekend. Looking forward to some fun, relaxation, a new direction through the Sunday message. So let's get things kicked off here together on the Morning Star Drive. Keep liking and commenting. Yes, uh, I, I recognize it, guys. I see all the likes coming up. Uh, the likes are way bigger than before. I think they've tripled. They're in like the 20s and 30s thirties and forties. So, um, you know, this is it. This is where we build the community. We get to communicate with each other through likes, communicate with each other through the comments and everything else. I want to hear from you guys, see how you're doing post your song questions, stories and everything else too. I'm super happy to hear from everyone on both sides, which, whichever side it is. All right. A uh, big reminder. Tomorrow is the day. Yes, it is. It's going to be Provicom, our first Providence uh, comedy. It's going to be three. It's ex- the the audio is exactly three three minutes and sixteen seconds, which is kind of cool. But uh, it's the first time for someone here doing this, and I hope you guys will just support him. Uh, let Chris know uh, that he's doing a good job. Put your comments in there too, and you know if there are some things that you might think is uh, you know maybe. Uh, uh, a little bit too, uh, still too sensitive right now. You can write just, just write down too soon, right? When you write down too soon, it's kind of a funny thing because it's like, yeah, it's too soon to talk about it. It's funny, but it's still too soon. But you know, it's it's not really like um, a criticism. It's more of like, hey, good try. You know, comedy is not something that you can just get in your first try. So. Uh, I am looking forward to that. It's going to be tomorrow uh, in Malaysia. It'll be like 7 a.m. I think, which is 8 a.m. in Korea, and then in the other side of the world, it's going to be like Friday 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. So uh, you guys will be able to get into that comedy. I hope you guys really enjoy that. I enjoyed already too. I just think about the last joke is the one that just it, it just took me over, and I was laughing. I was uh, I was laughing out loud for that one too. But either way, uh, you guys will enjoy it. It's going to come out tomorrow. All right, so you know, I, I'm I'm gonna tell you guys this week. I'm not sure about you guys, but for me, this week went by really fast, like really fast. Uh, I'm not sure why it went by so fast. You know, there's tons of news and stuff coming out, and you know, there were two trials this week and such too. But I'm not sure about you guys, but for me, it was really fast, like really, really fast. And uh, I'm just like, wow, we've already, you know, you know, getting all of March was really slow. I was trudging through it. Like it took a year to get through those from March 12th until now. But we're already done the first week of uh, April. And it just feels like uh, uh, it feels quite interesting that, um, yeah, that right now it's so fast. Yeah. Well, put in the comments if uh, whether it feels fast or slow for you this week that we just went through right now. Uh, one of the interesting um uh, news articles that came out in Korea was actually about the producer that created In the Name of God, the uh, In the Name of God, and now he's talking about making season two. And you know, he's just he he said he he actually was gonna just finish it with season one and just not bother with the rest of it. But then he said that it seems like it's necessary. And there are some interesting things he talked about when it co- comes to season two of In the Name of God, right? And these are the problems that he wants to deal with in the next season, which I, I don't agree with some of them, but uh, and some of them, I'm not sure. I don't know enough about it. But number one is he says the problem of the second generation. So for me is, you know, these are kids. You know, a lot of these are kids that are in high school and SS and stuff like that too. And I do think, um, yeah, I don't know how good it is to start. Like, well, I hope in Korea they'll protect the young people. Right. But yeah, I hope it doesn't go too like nasty into that. And then it says the problem of the legal system that favors the perpetrators, not the victims and the problem of punishing accomplices. Right. 
And then uh, the producer said, I think it's time for season two to start. So he's going to start going into it. Uh, and a couple things here, like Problem of Second Generation, personally, I, I don't think it's good to touch the to touch high school and middle school and such. Like I, That's just my personal opinion. Uh, the legal system that favors the perpetrators, mm, I don't know. I really don't, to be honest, because I only know Sunseam's trial, the first trial that happened. And I would say it would be the opposite if I just went by that trial that I knew. But yeah, I, I don't know the full system of Korea. I, I do know the differences between America and Korea, what type of system they do use. And I would say some of it is backwards. But technically speaking, it is a very, it's a much, much younger uh, judicial system than, let's say, the UK and America. So it's much more advanced over on that side. But uh, yeah, I, I would be interested to hear... Uh, I, I would be interested to hear what this producer's thoughts are on the system that uh, favors the perpetrators. And then I would love to hear people who are uh, strong in the legal system to talk about what the producer said. Like, that's what I would want to hear, to see the two sides of that too. And the problem of punishing accomplices... I don't know in Korea how strong it is compared to, like, say, America and Canada, even India, right? Where you'll have someone who does, like, um, commits a heinous crime and the accomplice will get, like, uh, like the, the, the person who committed the crime will get, like, 20 years and the person who helped will get, like, seven, right? Which is a lot. It's very, very strong. So, like, even India is not even that strong in their judicial system, but they punish the accomplices. I don't know Korea's system on that, so I would probably not want to listen to it from this docu-series. I'd rather listen to it from the actual legal system. But it would be interesting just to, to go over uh, how Korea punishes accomplices, right? And how Korea, you know, if, if, this, if what this person is saying true, that it actually favors the perpetrator, not the victim. That, that, that I find very interesting. But it's only because I only know about Sunstein's first trial. That, that's the only reason why. Right, but I don't know uh, other situations and such too. So I do. I would say that there is a massive flaw in the Korean judicial system, mainly because uh, every um, whenever the pr prosecution actually charges and goes to trial, there's a ninety nine point nine nine ninety nine point nine five percent uh, rate of being guilty. So it's almost like the investigation is the trial. And when, and if it hits the actual trial itself, you're almost guaranteed to be guilty. And I think that's, that's not a good system because there's no checks and balances in that too. And I think that's something that does need to be, uh, addressed for the legal system. So, uh, I think this could be a good, a big debate in Korea, not from all of us over here, because we don't really know as much, but I would love to hear how they would debate that in Korea. Right. Like I said, the system in Korea is not as advanced uh, as other countries. It's very, very young in its stages. And uh, from what I know, which I'm going to tell you is limited, it doesn't look like it favors. It just favors public opinion more than the perpetrator or the victim. It favors more of the public opinion. That's what I feel, right? That is whatever the public thinks and feels, like whoever wins the public is going to win like these really, really big cases and stuff like that too. But yeah, that's something that I think would be quite interesting. But you know, like as I've been talking about all this stuff uh, over the past weeks, right? Ever since March 12th until now, uh, a lot of this stuff does remind me of, uh, it, it helps, it reminds me of, of what happened in 1999, so I told you before that 1999, same thing happened in the past. Uh, at the end of the first half of history, 1999, second in command, number two, however you want to call it, also betrayed Sunstein. And basically, this guy named An gave information to the broadcast network to play, and it played on January 1999, and also started a new group. Now, before I think I said Exodus, but Exodus is actually started from KDH. The group that was started by An, I believe, was called Noah's Family. And I think the symbolism is they are the ones, that small group of people that escaped, escaped the judgment and went off and did something on their own. And that's why they started their own church or whatever it is. But it's, it was not exes. I think it's called Noah's family for sure. And, um, you know, going on the ark to safety, that kind of uh, symbolism. But I remember uh, for sure on, I, I, I did see him I, uh, on my birthday before I passed. So it was September 6th. I, I, he was in America, in LA, and he was doing a speech. And I remember he talked about the moon, right? There comes a time where the moon has to take over. And, you know, that's kind of his thing was, 
the sun sets and now the, it's time for the moon to come out and the apostles to take over. And that was 1999. And he was someone everyone revered and also someone that was extremely intelligent and charismatic. And I met him in 98 in September. And I also was in Paris, France, the same time as him in 1999. And, um, He's already, he's already done all the things behind Sunstein's back, everything else. And at that time, it was already August. So we're already going eight months in. And not, not many people knew actually uh, that he was the one doing those things, right? And he came to visit Sunstein in Paris, France. And when he saw Sunstein, the first thing he said to him was, give me some money. Like that's like, you know, imagine you don't even greet. It's like, yeah, 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 give me money, right? And Sunstein gave him money. And it was very interesting because he was number two, some, considered someone very close. Like the people's reaction to that was, wow, he's so close to Sunstein. He can talk to him like a friend kind of thing, right? And, you know, it, it also reminds me of when KJS talked about yelling at Sunstein t and stuff too. So that was quite interesting also. But, you know, uh, it, it kind of mirrors that, that type of thing there. <clears throat> but it was only like, a, a, it was a year and a half later. So we're, in, we're halfway through the year 2000. Right, where Sunstein actually finally talked about An, and you know a lot of people in the foreign countries won't know because you know he was mainly popular and big in Korea more than in the foreign countries. The foreign countries weren't even like really starting that you know they weren't even that big at that time either, right? And you know that was during the time when everyone started to find out it was An. An was the one that went to the broadcast station. An was the one that went behind his back, betrayed him, and did all these things. And the reaction was quite sad because people started saying bad things about Sunstein. Like, how could you not know? You have the mission. How could you not know this was happening behind your back? And a lot of people started to get angry and started even doubting him, right? But when Sunstein finally spoke about it, you know, he was, you know, he was upset at the people that were upset. He's like, do you think I didn't know what was going on? You really think I didn't know that God didn't tell me what was going on, Right? And then he, he asked the question, why do you think I didn't do anything? Why do you think I treated him even better than before, right? Because treating him better made people feel like he was really naive and knew nothing. And the one thing Sunstein said was because, you know, I love him that much. We've been together. We've been through so many things together. I treated him so well so that maybe he'd turn and repent. Maybe he'd just feel bad saying, oh, how can I do this to someone who treats me this well? Even though he did all those things against me, I knew it, but I treated him even better. Because he might have turned and said, maybe I'm doing something wrong. And Sunstein was so sad at the time because uh, this number two, An, for him, was someone from the very beginning who was there, one of the first five people. He loved him so much and he was just waiting and hoping and praying that he would turn back and say, okay, I'm so sorry, I shouldn't have done this. Right. And it's, it's something where you get to for a lot of us in the year 2000, that was like, wow, that's that's the true character of someone who comes, you know, not not to judge and to condemn, but to save. Right. He wants he wants what God wants more than anything else. And, I, and I, you know, and that that's it's kind of interesting because it reminds me of another story, too, like way back. I think it was like in the year 2001, maybe. Or maybe was it 2000? Yeah, maybe 2001. I, I forget. Maybe 2002. No, no, no. Maybe 2003. I forget. Some, somewhere in the early 2000s, um, we had these, these big cultural events, and we had one in Hawaii. And, uh, you know, me and a bunch of people from L.A., uh, we decided to do a talent show. Like, the talent show, we decided to do performance. And we did all these, uh, like, famous songs and did them, like, lounge singing. And... Um, but the problem was it was like 20 minutes long, right? So it was really, really long. But we practiced for months on it. And we started performing it. People were clapping and everything else. And then uh, suddenly Sunstein gets up in the middle of our show, walks to the tech sound tech at the back, and just turns off all the sound. And it just stops. And everyone's like, whoa, what's going on? And the mood was like, Oh my goodness. And I felt so embarrassed and so bad. And we found out later is because Sunstein um, was planning. He planned and practiced a magic show. He did a magic. He was practicing a magic show at the end. He wanted to show to God.
He wanted to do it for God. But the problem was we rented the gym for only a certain amount of time. And because our performance was so long, he couldn't perform it for God. So he was super upset. And of course, you know, um, I felt so terrible. I waited outside for something and just wanted to say sorry that it was too long. And uh, I waited outside. Finally, he came out. And when I went up to him to say sorry, he wouldn't even look at me. Like he just turned the other direction. And But I was just like... I was bent on apologizing. And even though he turned the other direction, he reached out his hand. He extended his hand to shake my hand after I said it was sorry. And it was kind of like that feeling where I said, oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. But he's still up. You know, it's, it's, it's an emotional thing. He really wanted to do something for God. But because of me, he couldn't do it. So, you know, he was upset, but he still extended his hand. And it just reminded me too at that moment is like, you know what? Sometimes I, I, sometimes we kind of take God for granted. You know what I mean? We take him for granted. Like he has no, uh, he has no emotion. He's like this stone that you can do anything you want to just slice his heart up, but he doesn't feel anything. But we know God feels things or God wouldn't get angry. God wouldn't get jealous. God wouldn't be sad when something happened. And I realized like, but even though in that state, because the love is so great, he still wants to forgive us and he extends the hand, right? Even though he's in that feeling and mood. And I would look at human beings when we're angry, when we're someone does something to us, I don't think we would extend the hand so early. We have to wait till we calm down. But God's love is so big and so powerful that even in that situation, he still extends the hand to forgive us. So for me, I was just like, wow, it reminded me of so many things. It triggered so many thoughts when um, a lot of the things that we, I was talking about this week and last week. But either way, I hope it's something that uh, inspires you too. Those are some cool stories from the past. <coughs> uh, hey, have you guys watched? The Prayer Podcast came out last night, uh, 5.30 p.m. on Thursdays, which is 6.30 p.m. on in Korea. And I think it's like six. Well, it's pretty early in the morning for people over there in the in the western uh, in the western countries. But um, I love the prayer podcast. Tuli's doing an amazing job, and right now prayer is what we really really need. So receive some grace from all the prayer. Listen to that prayer podcast. It's already episode ten. She's doing a standalone podcast, which is awesome. So, and a lot of people tell me that they listen to it while driving or commuting, and they say it's quite refreshing because. You become part of the prayer and you're praying while you're listening to it too, even though you're driving and stuff like that. So I think everyone go ahead and check it out every Thursday uh, evening, five th- or 6.30 p.m. Korea time. Just remember that, 6.30 p.m. Korea time. That's when you'll get uh, the prayer podcast every week. Uh, poll looks pretty nice. You, know, you got a lot of people on the poll and it looks like about half the people that are on the podcast now are from 2023, 47%. Almost half my audience now is from this year. It basically, well, it's, it's, it's obvious because it's a sign of the times. And I also think that people, uh, you know, the feeling is you don't, know, you don't know you need a fire extinguisher until there's a fire, right? And even for this podcast and this platform, uh, you, know, you know, still 53% of us have been here from last year. And before, I'm great that almost 40% are from 2020 from the very beginning, which is really cool for me to see the OGs. Uh, but when I looked at that, I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. And um, it shows that this platform, we, don't, we didn't know how necessary this platform was until the fire broke out. So I, I found that to be quite cool to, uh, to see uh, the mix of the people that are uh, joining uh, this podcast. But I am super grateful for everyone from 2020 all the way to 2023. Uh, you guys are always welcome here. And go ahead, leave a comment and everything else. Guys, you guys are awesome. All right, so let's get into some music from member artists from around the world on this relaxing and awesome Friday. Uh, What are we going to start off with? We're going to start off with some music from Daya Wings from Korea. This is one of my favorite songs from them. Probably this is a song that I really thought was like when it came out, it was the one that could be like played on the air anywhere in the world kind of thing. And this song is called Flow. And it's a song for the slanderers, uh, for them to just go on with their life and stop bothering us, right? The second song is Alone I Pray from the Somebody Boys in America. And last but not least, we have AG from Japan with a remix for the song Memories.
당장에 내 당장에 나 비가 속은 비파 속은만 파서불 가슴에 보석을 준비해 탁석을 홈런 치고 VIP 개마구어 주스 계절은 주스 황금 주스 마시고 Let it go 한 발자국 내 뒷것도 채 고개리 디기 입고 길이 맞는 짓도 채 너도 나도 파도 이 서퍼 단추 뭐를 봐 서퍼 서퍼 우리 사이 
That was Eiji from Japan with that remix of the song Memories. Uh, before that was Alone I Pray from the Somni Boys. And of course, that feature arts of the day. That's Dio Wings from Korea with Flow. And I hope you guys enjoyed that set of music from member artists from around the world. So uh, let's get into some news. What's going on around the world and what are we going to go into the weekend with? Uh, as brides of this history uh, and knowing how powerful our prayers are, we need to know what is going on so we can pray and repent for everything that is happening. So first, let's get into uh, this big love triangle of China. Taiwan and the U.S. as Tsai, President Tsai of Taiwan and Speaker of the House uh, Kevin McCarthy are having a meeting. Uh, so China has launched military drills in response to a much anticipated meeting between Taiwan's President Tsai Ing-wen and U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Uh, they met in California on Wednesday, a week after President Tsai was feted in New York with a leadership award. Uh, Ms. Tsai hailed their strong and unique partnership, and McCarthy said that arms sales to Taiwan must continue. Beijing, in turn, has vowed a resolute response and sent warships into the waters around the self-governed island. The timing of Ms. Tsai's visit it is hardly a coincidence in the U.S. There is a deep and growing hostility to China, and this is driving ever more open displays of support for Taiwan, with Democrats and Republicans competing to outdo each other. Uh, in second news, rivals Iran and Saudi Arabia hold high-level talks. The four ministers of Iran and Saudi Arabia, two bitter historical rivals in the Middle East, have held talks for the first time since 2016. Uh, Saudi's El Ekbaria TV aired a brief video showing Prince Faisal bin Farhan al Saud and Hossein Amir Abdullahian greeting each other in China. Last month, the two nations agreed to restore diplomatic relations during low level talks also in China. Saudi Arabia cut ties in 2016 after crowds stormed its embassy in Tehran. This followed Riyadh's execution of a prominent Shia Muslim cleric. Tensions between the Sunni-majority Saudi Arabia and Shia-led Iran have since often been high. They regard each other as threatening power that seeks regional dominance, and they also support rival sides across the Middle East, including Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, and most overtly in Yemen. Previous attempts at reconciliation had been unsuccessful, but last month the two countries said they would reopen embassies within two months. They also said trade and security relations would be re-established. The U.S. cautiously welcomed that announcement while U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres thanked China for brokering the deal. So uh, this is one of the big... Uh, issues that uh, the West does talk about as China is gathering all their enemies together, making them work together too. So that is something we do need to pray about as these geopolitics are moving forward. Uh, last but not least, we'll go over to North Korea. And uh, it says, brink of nuclear war, North Korea warning on military drills. Pyongyang state media publishes warning as U.S. and South Korea continue joint military exercises. North Korea has accused the U.S. and South Korea of escalating tensions to the brink of nuclear war through their joint military drills and promise to respond with offensive action. Uh, a commentary published by KCNA on Thursday criticized uh, the continuing exercises as a trigger for driving the situation on the Korean Peninsula to the point of explosion. U.S. and South Korea forces have been conducting a series of annual springtime exercises since March, including air and sea drills involving a U.S. nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, as well as B-1B and B-52 bombers and their first large-scale amphibious landing drills in five years. On Wednesday... B-52s were deployed for their first use on the peninsula in a month, and North Korea views such exercises as a rehearsal for invasion. So lots to pray about here, guys. Um, so that's the top three news around the world. Let's get into some sporting news, kind of relax and just, you know, let the information just pass through your brain, guys. All right. So in soccer news, it is Marcus Rash Rashford nets the winner for Man U as they beat Brentford 1-0 and they're back into the top four. The victory was a perfect response following a disappointing 2-0 defeat by Newcastle United on Sunday and lifted the Red Devils to 53 points, three ahead of fifth place Spurs and level with the Magpies in third. Uh, in uh, Barcelona... Uh, in sorry, in the Spain league, Barcelona Barcelona may be cruising towards the La Liga title, but Real Madrid have a cup double in reach with Benzema. Karim Benzema scored a second consecutive hat trick as Real Madrid hammered Barcelona four 0 at Spotify Camp Nou on Wednesday to set up a Copa del Rey final against Osasuna in May. Uh, in NBA news. 
Uh, the number one seeds in the East and West have all been clinched. The Bucks claim the number one seed as they defeat uh, the Chicago Bulls 105-92 to without Giannis Antetokounmpo. The Nuggets secure number one seed because another team lost. It was the Memphis Grizzly losing to New Orleans and now... Um, Nuggets have secured the number one seed. And actually in the West, because it's so wide open, only four teams have secured playoff spots. Uh, Denver, Sacramento, Memphis, and Phoenix. Uh, and of course, that big bid to get that uh, final secured number six, uh, Lakers end up losing to the LA, uh, LA Clippers 125 to 118. So they're still in the seventh seed and now kind of chasing for that sixth seed, and both Anthony Davis and LeBron James played in that game too. It was uh, the the end of a back-to-back, which is a very, very difficult game. Last but not least, uh, we'll go into the NHL, and uh, awards are coming around the corner, and there's only about six games left in the NHL, and it looks like three of the trophies are going to one person. Yes, it is Connor McDavid, or as, uh, as others call him, Connor McJesus, the savior of the league. Only five to six games left in the league. And for, uh, the, the Art Ross trophies for the player with the most points at the moment, Connor McDavid has 146, which is 26 more points ahead of his teammate, uh, which means that he's pretty much secured the Art Ross. Uh, the Rocket Richard trophies for the most goals. At the moment, he has 62. The next closest is 56 with about five, six games left, which means uh, it looks like he's secured the Rocket Richard trophy. And last but not least, the Hart trophy is the MVP of the league. And that uh, he's considered to be so far ahead that he is almost a unanimous decision at this point. So he might get three awards this year. He is definitely the Gretzky of this area. And those of those you guys out there who probably don't know who Gretzky is, Wayne Gretzky, probably, not probably, he is the greatest hockey player of all time. No one comes close to him. I'm dead serious. He's he's that good. Either way. So there it is, guys. That is uh, Top 3 News in Sports and Around the World. Hope that you guys really enjoyed that. But you know what that means. It is... The Golden Time. And yes, this is the Golden Time, a time of praise and worship to the Holy Trinity. Hope all of you guys are looking forward to giving glory to God and the Holy Spirit. So, what are we going to praise and worship today? We're going to start off with God of the righteous, and then an oldie but a goodie, I believe, and we'll end things off with according to the Lord's will. So as one body of the Morning Star Drive, let's spend this time giving praise, honor, and glory to the Holy Trinity. Fulfill 
as I am walking on this road that leads to the city of gold. The Lord said, is planted in my center, and on the Lord's wings I will rapture higher. I believe that the will has been fulfilled. I believe that my spirit rose.
And there it is. That is according to the Lord's will. Before that, I believe, and of course, that first song, God of the Righteous. All right, so now that our hearts are made ready through that time of praise and worship, let's get into today's word study. And it's very interesting because for all of us here, uh, all of our, uh, our our Wednesday messages are very different. And I think it's something that all of us have to uh, take into consideration as our leaders are doing their best. Make sure you keep praying for them, keep encouraging them, let them know they're doing such an amazing and awesome job. All right, so um, I'm going to go into the the Wednesday message that I heard and some really, really good points that I liked also. And I hope it's something that uh, you guys can benefit a lot from too. Um, my the, the Wednesday message I heard was broken into three parts. And this first part was talking about tribulation that we all face. And I think this is a very, very important point uh, that we have to remember is that suffering, pain, tribula- tribulation is not the most important thing. It's not the thing that we should be focusing on because it's a regular and normal part of life. It's part of the process of being successful. And it's even in the process of just living life itself where you're not successful and you're still going through suffering and pain too. So we have to realize, I think that's one of the big things that we have in our heads is not having the thoughts of, well, if God is with us, then why are we going through suffering? And I think that's one of those more of the emotional responses. Because if we think very rationally and think logically too, um, even if you don't believe in God, you're still going through suffering. Even if you don't believe in God, you're still going through tribulations and hardships just to gain your individual goals too, right? A great example is just school itself. How many people actually like school and taking tests and like going to school, paying money to do all that? And the answer is probably the vast majority are suffering in school, but they're willingly able to, wanting and able, not wanting, but willing to go through it because of 
the purpose and goal that it brings about, right? Getting a better job, being more educated, getting that degree. And these are things that are very, very important to people who, um, uh, who are going to school or else they, why would they pay so much, go into debt for it? Right? We have to, no matter what happens in life, regardless if you have faith or not, everyone goes through suffering. Everyone goes through pain. Right? And I would have to say is uh, the number one thing that allows you to go through all that pain and suffering is whether it's meaningful or not. And this is why some people will complain about it and some people won't is depends on is there anything mean, meaningful on the other side? And that's why we as people of faith around the world, regardless of religion, what religion you go through, um, we all have some type of purpose that is greater than our life right now. And that's why whether you're Muslim, you're Buddhist, Shinto, Christian, Catholic, Orthodox, whatever it is, because there's a greater purpose, this is why we're willing to go through uh, more more difficulties than others. The way we live our life, the way that we we think about how we should be living, uh, we will do things that are not normal to other people where people will ask, oh, why would you live like that? Why would you do this? Why do you go to Predon? Right? Same question to Muslims. Why do you pray five times a day? Why are you going so early to church? It's the same thing that could be uh, asked to multiple, multiple different religions at the same time. And I think that's one of the things that has to change in our mindset uh, is not to get into that zone or that mode of, well, if God was really with me, then why am I suffering? And the answer is everyone suffers. It's part of life. It's part of the process of how things actually happens. Life continues no matter what. It's true, right? Regardless, you know, imagine whether you're hungry or sleepy, like life doesn't stop like, oh, you're hungry. Okay, so let's kind of pause everything so you don't have to pay your bills until you're not hungry anymore. No, it makes no difference. It keep, life keeps going no matter what. It doesn't matter how long the night feels. The night is the night. It doesn't matter how much you're suffering. The night is the night. But the one thing we know for certain is eventually the nights will end and the sun will come up and eventually the sun will go back down and the night will come back too. And uh, one of the things that we can't do is base our faith or our life based on difficulties, hardships, and difficulties. That's like, that's the last thing you should be focusing on. Why? Because it's not something that is uh, exclusive only to people of God. It's, it's everyone's going through it. Everyone does. Everyone and also everyone who wants the joyful life and is living joyfully, it doesn't mean they're not suffering. It just means they have more, their suffering is more meaningful. The worst type of hardship is when you go through it and it's worth nothing. Like, you know, it's kind of like I talked about yesterday in the Q&A. We, we learned in Matthew chapter 23, it talks about all the blood of the prophets from Abel, uh, from Abel and, and all the prophets who were killed, the blood comes on this generation that didn't accept Christ. Why? Because that was the whole purpose of them dying for it and spreading the gospel of the coming of the Christ. And if everyone accepted Jesus, then all those deaths and suffering would have been worth it. But since they didn't, it makes it worthless. You know what I mean? So a jo joyful life, it doesn't mean it's lacking suffering or hardships. We all have it. It's just that it's meaningful, right? God's will is always done through sacrifice, hardships, and suffering. And it's not just God's will. It's anything. Everything is done in that way, right? We're all going to go through it. And that was the very first point that was made. And I think that's a great point that we have to remind ourselves about is just because of hardships and difficulties does not mean it's not the history. Like that is one of the most ridiculous things I've heard is this can't be the history of God because there's too much suffering. And the answer is read the Bible. Read the Bible and you're going to see how much suffering everyone actually went through. And it wasn't easy, even though it was the will of God. Now, uh, the second thing that we have to remember, keep in mind when it comes to the Sunday message is God is always with us and helping us. Who? It's the ones that know him. It's the ones that he knows. It's that love relationship. Because God is this, God is the God of love, then whoever uh, he loves and they love him back, they guarantee God is going to be with you and God is going to help you. And that is <coughs> a great point. Like Matthew chapter 5, verse 45, great verse that was used is, 
The sun rises on the on the on the righteous and the wicked. And the when the rain comes down, it's not just for the wicked, not just for the righteous. Everyone, it goes on to everyone. Which means, because God is a God of love, God loves all people at least at the basic level, right? And you know, we just got to know that as us in this history, we're going through this suffering, but God is going to help us. God is with us. Right? Don't and, and like I said in the first point, don't look at the suffering and the tribulations as the reason why God is with you or not, because it basically means you haven't read the Bible very well. There's suffering everywhere, right? So we have to be those that don't judge all the situation circumstances incorrectly according to our own thoughts, our own ways, our own perceptions. But we need to understand it from God's perspective, right? Knowing why God is helping us, right? now, And I like these six points that were given is why does God help us? And there's six reasons why God, God helps us. Number one is because he loves us, right? So there's number one is this is why God helps us because God loves us. And that's why God, every person in the world, because we are the number one creation, will get the basic level of love. Second reason God helps us is because we love God, right? And that's something that, that uh, the second reason why God helps us is because we belong to him. Number three, God helps us because we are walking on the path that he wants, the path that fulfills the purpose of creation. And because we're on that path, God helps us even more because we are doing his will. Number four, God helps us because we need protection. Our body needs protection because our spirits are being made according to what our body does. And that's why God needs to help our bodies so we don't die. We don't get you know maimed or whatever it is. The fifth reason why God helps us so that the history of this purpose of creation, that his will will not break, right? So even though we fulfilled the purpose of creation, remember this is an ongoing history. It's not a one shot thing. It's an ongoing thing. And God does not want the history of God to break, right? The purpose of creation can't break. We need to keep it going. And this is why even right now in the most difficult times, God is helping us even more. And the sixth and last reason why God helps us because of the inheritance from God, right? There is an inheritance that God is giving to the people who fulfill the purpose of creation, right? And it's all of us who fulfill that will. We're the ones that are going to receive it. So I really, really hope it's something that all of us will uh, understand those six reasons why God helps us, right? Which means the last, the very last point, and I think this is one of the greatest points that, that Providence has talked about through the entire history. I talked about at the very beginning also is human responsibility, we have responsibility. Now that you know that God is with you, you know that God is going to help you, you know that suffering and tribulation, whatever, that's gonna that's part of life itself. But what do we need to do? We have to realize we have to believe and take action and take it with conviction, right? Don't just be the people like, well, let's just kind of see how things happen. That's not faith. Faith is not like, let's wait and see for something that I can see with my eyes. No, faith is something that is innate. It's inside. It's internal. It's because of all the things that, we've, that God has proven to us that this is the history of God. We push forward, and we know that with that faith, God will, God will do even more for us. We rely on God, but we're not just relying on God. God relies on us to take action boldly, confidently, like, like Joshua going to war, those 13 battles. God's relying on us to fulfill the, the purpose of creation, fulfill the will on the earth. That's what we need to do. And the, the, the reason why we don't feel, the reason why we don't see God's amazing uh, miracles that happen is because God does these miracles through us. A lot of people ask and they'll say like, why, Pastor Sky, why do only things happen to this person? And the answer is because this person's taking action, like real action with faith, convicted. And that's why God can, God's working only through him. How can he work through someone who does nothing? God is going to be with us just like Joshua. I will be with you until the end. And if you follow my decrees, then you will never lose. I'll be with you just like I was with Moses. So take action. Be courageous. Be bold. Be brave. And with me, you will never be defeated. And this is why Joshua, he, with that faith, was able to take the promised land. He took action on his faith. Then he received the promise of God. And we have to be those that also understand this too. Right now, in the time of difficulty, we, we rely on God even more. However, it also means 
To rely on God more means to pray more, ask God for more help, take action more, even more boldly. That's what we got to do. Believing in God, depending on Him, we do it through prayers, and then God relies on us to take action with that firm conviction that this is absolute. And this is when we overcome, guys. This is when we overcome all the difficulties, everything that keeps coming, we overcome, we overcome, and we overcome. We got to do it. With prayer and the Word, we're making a solid faith and we become solid before God. That foundation is firm, it's unshakable. That no matter how hard the difficulties come, we're not going to be shaken. All right? So I hope that all of us too, we're going through the suffering, guys. Don't try to avoid it or get away from it. But know that God will not let us end in tribulation. So we got to do the work we must do. We got to pray. got to get ourselves into that right uh, mindset and mentality. Right? So tribulations will come and go. But it is us, the faith. Right? It is the words that will, never, that will always remain. And the gospel will be preached to the ends of the earth. And in the end, remember, God will not let it end in tribulation. Everything ends with the will being fulfilled. Okay? So there it is, guys. That is the end of today's uh, word study. Hope you guys really enjoyed it from the Wednesday message. If you guys have any things you want to add to the, from the Wednesday message, go ahead and add it. would love to hear uh, from you guys too. All right? So uh, let's get into today's song of choice. So this is Elevation Worship. Once again, uh, they got some really good music coming out. This song is called Same God. Never 
changes, never changes. You heard your children then, you hear your children now. You are the same God, you are the same God. You answered prayers back then, and you will answer now. You are the same God, you are the same God. You were providing then, you are providing now. You are the same. prayer tonight. Come and fill me again. Come and fill me. And that was Elevation Worship with the song Same God. Hope you guys really enjoyed that. I had another time of just uh, listening to some praise and worship also. All right, so uh, now that that song of choice is out of the way, let's get into the final segment of today and for the entire week. And of course, we have an amazing member over there in Korea. He's in charge of the SS at his church. Uh, It's Daniel Baker, fresh out of high school. 
And uh, he does this every single week, and he does it for mental health. This is called uh, Until the End. Many of you have already heard a lot of his episodes, too. Continue to encourage him. Continue to pray for him. He's doing such an amazing job. Everyone, please welcome Daniel Baker from Korea with Until the End. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Do It Until the End podcast. Now, I want to tell you guys a very interesting fact because it's already 17, episode 17 of Until the End, mental health. Wow, 17 weeks, 17 weeks of mental health already. Now, I want to ask you guys, after listening to 17 weeks of mental health, how is everyone's mental health doing? You know, very difficult time right now you know it's even though our mental health might be taking a dip you know i hope that this podcast is increasing your knowledge on mental health now you know this time is a very difficult time uh both probably wise but maybe within your personal life your mental health might be having difficulties too but during these difficult times we need to start doing a lot of fun stuff, a lot of hobbies that we like to do. These days, you know, I've narrowed my hobbies down into two fun hobbies, volleyball and bass fishing. You know, the spring bass fishing is on fire right now. Now, what does volleyball and bass fishing roughly have in common? Let's take a second and think. What do those two things, bass fishing and volleyball, what are the similar things within these two sports. Um, I've thought about this and I'm like, why do I like both things so much? And I realize both sports spikes your adrenaline a lot. Because when you're playing volleyball, for me, it's like doing a puzzle. And you're always thinking, how do I make this next point? You know, when you try new things and you succeed in volleyball, This is the best feeling you have in volleyball, your adrenaline spikes. Uh, Last week, my church team played with, um, had a practice game with another team, and I was the opposite spiker. Opposite spiker is on the right side spiker. Now, this position, I don't play. I'm usually a left side spiker, so I, I don't play it that much, but I do enjoy the position. Now, what I was playing, I was constantly experimenting with the timing, the steps, and the arm swing. And when those, all of those came together perfectly, and when I was tweaking those into the perfect way, I was able to make a monster spike. And that's when the adrenaline kicks in. Now, for bass fishing, when you're fishing and you have a bass hit your lure, like it's a truck hitting, uh, it's like a truck hitting your lure, and you're fighting it. It is extremely fun, and that's when the adrenaline kicks kicks in. Now, just today, I caught a really good bass, and it was amazingly fun. Now, when we're in high times of stress, it is extremely important to release the daily stress you get in a productive and peaceful way. If you don't find good ways to release your stress, you will have a good chance of having difficulties with anxiety, depression, and it could also affect your physical health. You know, for me, there were four or five extremely high stress situations that I've had in the past. There are these four or five months of high stress, very low productivity uh, times that, you know, I guess this is the sixth time, but sometimes I didn't release my stress in a productive way. You know, I've played a ton of games i dipped i dipped deep into the media uh media you know rabbit hole and because of i didn't release my stress in a productive way you know i had i I was starting to have stomach issues when i had high stress and anxiety situations so when i was doing my sat uh, i had very bad stomach issues and that pretty much you know, I, d- I wasn't able to be in a studying environment or, you know, uh, a testing environment. And it really kind of destroyed my physical health uh, because I wasn't able to, 
you know, release my stress in a productive way, you know, but I have this condition under control right now. But in hindsight, it is very pre uh, preventable. So it is also in this situation, uh, we need to find a, a way to release your daily stress in a productive and peaceful way. This is an issue that is different for different people. You know, uh, you need to find a good way to release your stress for it is different for different people. For you, it might be reading. Uh, it could be praising the Lord. Uh, find the right way for yourself. Now, I really want to ask you guys a question because this is the main part of the segment today. The question is, what part of the day is most valuable to you? You know, for me, I've always been, nighttime is most valuable. You know, I've always been a person working at night. I get a lot of productive work during the night. Even right now, you know, I during the night times, I've always thought that it was the best. But the more I read about past sermons, you know, the more I realized the importance of morning times. I realized why something you have saying since then you have always saying that the morning times is the most important. The morning times, in a short version, is very important because it gives you much needed momentum to do the things in the day. So, how do we get the most out of the morning times? There is one word and one word only. Okay? Think about the word. What is that word? There's one word that that is the word to get the most out of the morning times. The one word is routines. Okay? The key to taking control of the morning is to do easy and useful tasks first thing after you wake up. Easy and useful. Those are the two things that you want to focus on when making your routine. So, easy. You don't want to do things that are too demanding because it's hard to make that into a habit and put that into your routine, right? So what you want is, oh, you wake up and you're like a robot. You you do the things in your routine like a robot. However, you also don't want to do something that is useless in your routine because those, uh, those useless things, if they are in your routine, they don't improve your life, right? They don't improve your life, but also if you have something in your routine, it can actually make your life a little bit worse, right? One thing that is useless, uh, that just came to my mind, is first thing in the morning, you look at your phone. Okay, that's the most useless thing you can do. Um, it, it can destroy your, you know, your cognitive strength, um, you know, there's there's multiple bad things or bad reasons to not look at your phone in the morning first thing you wake up now when you consciously make a routine you're automatically thinking long term why why is this the case the fundamental base of routines are made for long-term success you are improving your life gradually you know as i said you're doing things that are easy which also means that you're doing things that are, I would say, smaller. You're not, you're not doing massive things in your routines. Uh, so you're improving your life gradually. But there is improvement, right? You know, there's this small, you're doing a repeating a small thing in your routine. So you gradually improve. You know, most people, they don't have a routine. You know, they jolt up by the loud alarm. They go to shower. Then after the shower, they go to work. Then repeat, um, you know, waking up 20 minutes earlier, doing your morning routine, then going on your, your day, provides you with such good momentum and gradual improvement in your life that it's a no-brainer to wake up 20 minutes earlier and doing the morning routine. Now, just to recap the two things that you gain from, you know, having a productive routine is you gain momentum. That's number one. And number two, you have a gradual improvement in your life. Now, 
as much as I'm, you know, recommending having a morning routine, you might be thinking, oh, Daniel, then what's your morning routine? You know, I have sent an example, of course, and I already have one. Um, so my ru- morning routine starts like this. I wake up, you know, I look at the time, um, which I, I pretty much do, but I make my bed. So that's my first little win. Okay. First productive thing I do is I make my bed. Then I go into the living room. I probably like limp into the living room because I'm like half awake. <laughs> you know, I'm half awake. Then I go on to YouTube and because I use uh, YouTube premium, I'm able to download uh, these YouTube videos and I do a stretching routine. So I stretch for around 30 to 45 minutes. Then I make my coffee. Then I go outside. Okay. So how did I make this morning routine? First off, I thought, what do I want this morning routine to function as? So my morning routine is a function. It functions as it. Okay. I made it for it to be a perfect warm up for my body. Okay. And I'm what, by doing this by, you know, stretching and going outside, I'm getting out of my comfort zone just enough. So it gets me moving inside the day. You know, I gain so much mental and physical momentum by stretching, you know, and going outside, but I'm also improving, you know, I'm getting the momentum, but I'm also slowly improving because my body is getting looser and looser every day. You know, it helps me a lot when playing volleyball and, you know, getting taller, you know, when I play volleyball, you know, when I actually stretch a lot in the mornings, I actually feel like my jumps are higher. I'm getting more hang time. And overall, I feel like I'm getting taller. So this was my routine. And if you're still listening, you know, I know there might not be many people because it's at the end of the podcast, end of the week. But if you're listening, I really want you to write your morning routine in the comment section below because I'm very interested what your morning routine is. And if you don't have a morning routine, I I really want you to, you know, put this into practice and make one and put it in the comment section below so I can, you know, check it out and maybe comment and have a conversation with you guys. So I'm currently in South Korea right now and it's currently raining. You know, I love the rain because when it's raining, I sleep so well. I sleep too well when it's raining. So I usually sleep a lot over time. I sleep 11, 12 hours because it's raining. You know, there's something about the rain that is soothing and it's just so heartwarming. It's like, I, I, I thank God for letting me live an amazing and improving life because of this environment. Now, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And to everyone who are changing and improving the lives and improving themselves to become closer to the Lord, let's walk this path together. Peace. Bye-bye. 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 And thank you so much, Daniel, for another wonderful episode of Until the End. You are just amazing. And I hope that uh, you receive a lot of encouragement from everyone here uh, who's writing in the comments and such too. Uh, It was an amazing week. I hope you guys really enjoyed all the podcasts and just really had uh, a great time together with the Holy Trinity. And uh, have an amazing weekend. And we'll see you guys again next week. Monday? Yeah, next Monday on the... Oh, don't forget, guys. Remember, comedy, Provicom is tomorrow morning. So go ahead and make sure you check that out. Saturday morning is going to be the first episode. It's a short one, but uh, we got to get ourselves into something, right? So everyone, have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you guys on Monday on the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. It's the Morning Star Drive, 117.8. You saw up with Sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind I'm burning with desire and the passion Nobody can stop me when I'm like this I got my head in the zone, you know I'm on the morning star drive, you know I'm burning with desire and the passion Nobody can stop me when I'm like this